Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I now yield uh, three minutes to the gentlelady from California, ranking member of the Tactical Air and Land Forces Subcommittee, Ms. Sanchez. Gentlelady from California is recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to Chairman Thornberry and to Ranking Member Smith and to all of our staff for tirelessly working on this very incredibly important bill. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Turner for uh, the past four years um, chairing with he being the chairman and I being the ranking member of the subcommittee for tactical air and land forces. It's been a pleasure. Uh, the National Defense Authorizing Act, of course, um, is a must pass. And we've passed it for the past 53 years and I am really honored to have been part of it for the past 20. The NDA is the annual piece of law that uh, puts the necessary resources and funding to ensure that our service members are fully equipped and trained and to defend our country here and abroad. And all of our military systems, air, land, water, space, are authorized by this legislation. It provides new opportunities for the Department of Defense to engage in innovative research and development to ensure that America has the most technologically advanced military. And of course, that also bleeds over into the civilian world with all of our new technologies. The NDA makes sure that service members and their families are provided with necessary support and resources as they sacrifice their lives to defend their country. Uh, just last Friday, I had the opportunity to be in Erie, Pennsylvania, where uh, our son was commissioned as a second lieutenant an officer into the U.S. Army artillery. So um, pretty excited to continue to support our military families because we are one. Um, this bill also provides provisions to support women in the military, making equipment that actually fits them, for example. And uh, uh, we put in language for parental leave uh, for our service members for up to 14 days. It increases funding for, funding for nuclear nonproliferation, something which is, I am an adamant supporter of trying to eliminate um, nuclear threat for the future for our grandchildren and their children. It increases funding for K through 12 STEM education because again, we have to invest in our future and then the future of education is uh, equal to national security. The legislation also provides funding and resources to counter terrorism, including those threats from ISIL. On our particular subcommittee, um, we included some significant oversight legislation. Everybody thinks about passing laws, but the reality is that one of the main things that we have to do as members of Congress is to oversee what is really happening in programs and with the money of our taxpayers. So we included the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter software oversight, the F-18 Super Hornet oxygen system, and a multi-year procurement authority for the Army's helicopters. However, the successful passage of this important legislation is at risk because first it doesn't comply with the Republicans' Budget Control Act because it's $18 billion over the budget caps. And secondly, it includes a number of discriminatory provisions, such as language that would allow government contractors to discriminate against the LGBT community. Generally, so time there are many things that we need to do to ensure that this bill can be, in a bipartisan way, passed by this House. 